Hello, welcome back to Let's Play Fire Emblem. I hope y'all are ready for a little bit of a change of pace. And by that, I mean I hope you brought your notebooks. Because it's no gig of time. We're going to learn a lot of history now. No, I'm not joking. <laughs> Get ready. Because there's going to be a test. Feel free to take all these notes as we go. Anyway, if you, uh, for whatever reason, missed last episode, uh, or the episode before that, or hey, this is your first episode, let me just say, we finished Linwood, and now we are starting Elwood mode. And boy howdy, things are going to get relatively spicy. For now, they're gonna get a, they're gonna, they're gonna ramp up. Believe me when I say that this game is going to get political as fuck. So. And, and, uh, in, in all seriousness, you don't have to, <laughs> you don't necessarily have to memorize everything here. But you may wanna, you may wanna pay, take some notes. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you now, burn is going to be a big one. Take note of burn. Burn is going to be mayhaps. Son of a bitch, I said mayhaps again. Oh man, I need to go to electric shot therapy for this. Anyway, uh, burn's gonna be an important nation. Sake, we kind of already got a meat towards the sake. And then is this, uh. What is this? Knights of. Oh, Ilya, duh. Ilya, we're not even gonna really see too much of Ilya, to be honest, but keep that in the back of your mind. So, really, Burn and Sake are probably gonna be our most important nations to keep out for. Uh, the Western Isles, um, we don't. We hardly visit. I mean, well, that's not true, but. <laughs> Whatever. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna like keep prepping you for all this. Just, just, just rest assured. There's gonna be some visitations, some field tripping, if you will. Hmm. Lycian League, though. That's gonna be where we're starting out. Lycian League is gonna be where Fairy is, and if you recall correctly, Elliewood is a noble chap who was the son of the Marquis of Fairy, and we are starting Elliewood mode. So let's check in on what's happening in Faray. Maybe there's uh, some peace and prosperity going on. It's been a year since we last saw Hollywood. Things can change. Hell, it's been a year since we saw Lynn. Things can change. For all we know, her dad, who's her dead grandpa or whatever the fuck, her uncle, could be dead for all we know. So, hmm. hey, look, it's Hollywood in 20 years. <laughs> Just kidding. It's Hollywood's dad, Albert. But apparently he's vanished. That's foreboding. Also, his dad's a paladin. Come back here. I want to use a paladin. No. No. Don't go to Santa Cruz. Uh, sadly, uh, we're, we're not sure what he's up to. And a month has passed. Damn, fuck. Rumors of his death. So this is, uh... Imagine if your president is just, like, fucking... Well, your president. The... Uh, how about your your country leader or prime minister or even just elected official just disappeared for a month? And this is like currently with technology, people would be going crazy. Now imagine back in then when they didn't have most easily accessible forms of technology and communication. This is a big deal. So, Hollywood. I, th I think we're we're getting the gist of what his story is going to be about. His journey is going to be looking into what's going on with dear old dad. And uh, believe you me, it may sound a little bit simple at first, but things will get spicy. Not too spicy, though. I'm not good with that. My doctor just said my colon just cannot afford it. Like, if my colon was on a budget, it'd be on food stamps. And spicy food would be like frozen dinner, excessive luxury for my local grocery store. Anyway, so... Hollywood and uh, who's this purple haired fuck? Jesus, purple hair and purple beard. People in this world just do not have normal hair. Ah well. Ooh, more purple hair. Granted, this is more like. This is more dark purple. Anyway, this is Hollywood's mom. Uh, weirdly enough, red plus purple just equals red. I guess purple's a recessive gene. Which doesn't really make too much sense. I don't want to be one of those people right now. Just work with it. This is Elliewood's mom. And uh, not to be one of those guys, but his mom is kind of hot. 
Or at the very least, she's a lot younger than you'd expect for Elbert. Like, Elbert looks like he's pushing 40. Meanwhile, she looks like she could be a late 20-year-old. Eh, whatever. So yeah, even, uh, even, uh, even his wife is doubting, or, well, not Elbert's wife, Elbert's wife is doubting if he's alive. Meanwhile, Elliot has to reassure his family and his mother that, uh, you know, dear old dad's gonna be okay. You know, this is just, a uh, you know, sometimes dads just disappear. I mean, we, <laughs> we all know about that, right? <laughs> oh man, my generation and fathers. <laughs> anyway, uh, don't pay attention to that blue-haired lady on the right. We're never seeing her again, and I would fucking hate it if you brought her up at any port or inconvenience for me. Forget she exists. Also, if you were quick to notice it, Elliewood's mom was, in fact, a bishop. Which is a little nice tidbit, if nothing else. So yeah, this is just basic foundational stuff for uh, Elliewood. Getting to know who we are going to be dealing with. For all intents and purposes, the guy on the left there, Marcus, he's going to be kind of like our Kent for the meantime. Uh, except for better, because he's extremely overpowered, but also, just in terms of plot and story, he's going to be kind of like our, uh, our stoic information giver. He's also a sworn vassal to, uh, or is it vassal? I know he's a sworn knight, but I don't know if he would be considered a vassal. Um, he's the sworn fealty to House Furray. So, uh, yeah. That's, that's all there is. <laughs> oh man, Lowen. Holy shit. This guy. This guy looks like what not taking a shower feels like. Jesus. Fucking Christ. Okay, um, anyway, this village is in trouble because Grognigrad. No, it's not Grognigrad, but it's very close. Um, this guy. Fucking Sir Putrid over there is uh, raiding the village. Hey, look, it's a new character, one we're not going to be using. His name's Lowen. He doesn't have eyeballs. Um, <laughs> that's really all there is to Lowen. Um, I know some people defend him to the to the depths of Earth itself. I don't. I don't really like Lowen. He's going to be a cavalier, and we're not using him. Yeah, bandits, bandits. I know. Are you sure of that one? Blah, blah, blah. And here is going to be another unit, because we just can't stop getting new units right now. This is going to be Rebecca. And she's 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 pretty cool. She's, uh... Do you remember Will? Remember how Will was an archer but sucked? Rebecca's an archer, but she doesn't suck. I mean, granted, she can be difficult to use, because she starts out pretty weak, but... Uh, once you get her a few level up, she's, she's really good. I, uh, she's one of my favorite units in this game just because of her personality and what she represents as far as uh, theming goes, but I'm not going to be using her, sadly. Why? Because that bandana does not match her hair and it is heinous. Capital ANUS heinous. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I recommend using her if you're not using Will already, just because she's Will but better. And she's a girl, and girls are always better at being on the sidelines. Am I right? <laughs> oh man, faux sexism is the funniest topic I could come up with right now. That's I'm at my A game right now. Oh, they're, they're, they're introducing us now. I have to give a shit. <clears throat> oh yep, this is me. So this is how we're getting roped into this scenario. We were in the village for whatever reason. Lawen saved us. I'm still not using you, Lawen. Don't think that for a fucking second. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, Elliewood recalls us because we met Elliewood and we kind of like didn't even make eye contact with him. And uh, Elliewood, being in the blunder he is now, could use some advantages with tactical advice. It's true. Lynn would not have fucking survived. If anything, I was Lin Sword. Don't forget it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just get to the part where you, yeah, ask for my help. 
So this might look intimidating, but this is not going to be that big of a deal. This chapter is basically, for all intents and purposes, going to be a train Ellie Wood chapter. Because Ellie Wood, lovely guy, starts at level 1. And I'm not about that. <laughs> Granted, Ellie Wood becomes good once you get him some level ups, but we're, he's going to be our primary lord, and God knows I want him to be not level 1 as soon as possible. So, with that in mind, he doesn't start with an iron sword, sadly. He starts with a rapier, which is uh, sort of like a, a manicotti for him, just not as good. It's still going to be a pretty rare weapon that he... You only come across like one other one in the game, I think, maybe even two, depending on what mode you're playing in, but uh, either way, I don't want to break it immediately, so I'd rather just give him an iron sword right now from Lowen, who... Lowen's not going to be doing jack shit. And uh, here's what we're going to do. Let's see. Probably not going to be doing too much. Yeah. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to be very lame about this. And... Uh, I need to trade. I keep forgetting that unequipping isn't in this game. Because that would make life a little too convenient. But uh, anyway, so we're going to be doing this. Yeah, this is... Oh, by the way, before I forget, this is Marcus. Uh, Marcus is going to be our first official overpowered unit. Um, I guess typically Wallace could qualify as that, but we got him for so briefly, and really he wasn't that great, that uh, he doesn't really qualify. But every, well not every, but most Fire Emblem games, if I'm not mistaken, have uh, an archetype of a character where they start out way over leveled, and they're meant to be kind of like a crutch if you get into a bad situation early on, or if you need to like you know, rescue someone, or kill an enemy that caught you by surprise. Uh, they're typically referred to you as Jigen characters, J-E-I-G-A-N. No idea if I'm pronouncing that right, no idea if I care. <laughs> anyway, he's going to be that archetype. Uh, the problem is that um, with these types of characters, they tend to have really bad growth, but they start out with pretty decent bases. Um, well, not pretty decent, actually good bases for where you're at in the game. So, like, right now, Marcus is going to be far and away our best unit because, look at that, no one else is even coming close. However, he's getting less experience per kill, and when we get other characters up to his level, they're going to outshine him at that point. Like, um, hell, even Kent could probably uh, outshine him a bit just because his speed is low. Um, and, I mean, he's going to be useful. I'm just going to not going to... No, 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 no. Can't deny it. <laughs> I'm not going to rely on him too much because, frankly, I don't want him experience hogging and he's better off being used as a meat shield in my opinion, at least for normal mode. In hard mode, you're going to want to use him because <laughs> there's going to be enemies that you got to kill and uh, Marcus will be the deal maker, breaker, or whatever have you. Anyway, um, unfortunately this chapter might be a bit boring because, like I said, I'm just doing it to train Ellywood. And um, that in mind... This is what it's going to look like for a good bit of it. Whatever. Well, uh, hey! Hey! Remember him? <laughs> we got a good old familiar face. It's Dorcas and friend! Friend that we've met already. <laughs> Just kidding. It's going to be a new character. Oh, shit. Okay, you missed out on their dialogue. Long story short, um, they're just in the neighborhood and they're like, Fuck it, I see Elliewood, let's help him out. Or whatever. You don't care, you don't need to care. So this is going to be Bartry. Bartry is the last new unit we get in this chapter. Uh, we get a, a shitload of new characters in this chapter. And God forbid we get too many. Anyway, this is Bartry. He's... Mm, you know, I'm divided on Bartry. I used to really dislike him just because he's a huge pain in the ass to use. Like, look at his speed right now. That is three speed. That's... I think that's far and away the lowest speed that you get for a starting unit in this game. Probably, arguably, in a lot of the more recent games in general as well. So he is not going to be doubling like it until very late game if you get him a lot of speed level ups. Um, he's just not very helpful. I mean, that and no spoilers, but we do get a better axe unit uh, next chapter. Um, <laughs> So, I mean, it's kind of difficult to really make an argument for Bartry. On the other hand, I like Bartry as a character. He's kind of a dork, 
he's one of those, you know, dumb muscle type characters, but it's kind of funny because of how over the top they go with it in his characterization. And it's kind of a shame that we missed out on that. I, because I do kind of like his dialogue. Um, beyond that, as far as comparisons to Dorcas, um, if you haven't trained Dorcas by this point, he would come in with uh, fairly balanced stats. Right now, our Dorcas is pretty much outclassing Dor uh, Bartree in every way. Uh, Bartree's only beating us in defense, and that's by one point. Um, everything else, we are trashing Bartree in. So, that should already identify that Dorcas is probably going to be a better pick for long-term usage. Um, beyond that, um, I don't know. I, I, I think if you really wanted to use an axe user, you could make a case for either one. I, I mean, I would say Dorcas is probably the easier one to use long term, just because he gets Lin Mode under his belt. Uh, meanwhile, Dorcas, or <sighs> Bartree, is going to have more characterization to work with, and you also literally need him to recruit one character uh, in a different mode, which we will not be seeing. <laughs> <laughs> and no, I'm not making that up. That sounds like some my dad works at Nintendo shit, but I'm actually telling the truth on this one. So yeah. Uh you Dorcas, right? Okay. So I spent enough time blabbing on there. Let's let's do this. Uh this village is gonna have an energy ring in it, if I'm not mistaken, or is it a Draco shield? Oh no, Dorcas has an energy ring. Never mind. He has the village will have a Draco shield. So we wanna protect it. Or actually, let's visit it right now. So yeah, there's an, in this energy ring that Dorcas has is completely independent of the one that we got in Lin Mode. He's always going to have it. So uh, he's not going to have two if you don't use the other one. So, yeah. <laughs> the energy ring we're probably going to be holding on to for a while. In fact, almost any stat up item I'm getting, I'm probably not going to be using for a very long time. Like, I, I'm going to use it if I get into units that have problems. Like, if for whatever reason, you know, I get an Ellie with that gets no strength level ups, then I'll use the energy ring on him. But, for now, I'm going to play it by ear. Anyway, enough blabbing around. I've been talking too much, not enough, sh not enough uh, axing, killing, murdering, wanton, reckless abandon. Oh, Dorcas. Even with the fortress advantage, you're not doing amazing, but what can I say? And now, Elliewood, does he have? He does. He starts with the Warner. Right, good. So, let's do this. I actually probably am not in a good position, but I don't care. I I don't care. I'm, I'm, I'm reckless and stupid. It's normal mode. This... Damn. This is not good, then, because the other bandit's going to run up and kill Elliewood, probably. Oh, boy. If I die in this chapter, I'm going to feel like a big, gigantic idiot. Okay, good. So the archer's not going to kill, at least. <sighs> Man. That's the fun of doing live commentary. I get to stress over if a character is going to die embarrassingly. Oh, man. Wouldn't it be nice to have Sarah? Wouldn't it? Well, don't worry. We get her soon. By soon, I mean literally next chapter. But that's, that's next chapter. For now, uh, I want to kind of hasten things up a bit, but I don't know what I'm going to be doing. <sighs> I think I need to do this. This is kind of going shitty. <laughs> um, okay. Dorcas, you're going to do this. Cool. Dorcas is stealing all the experience this chapter. It kind of sucks. And then you do this. And then Elliewood is going to have to take another blow from the archer just because life sucks. Okay, so our plan now is to get Elliewood on this fortress, heal him one last time, therefore he'll be doing a lot, or surviving a bit more hits, he'll be healing automatically every turn, and god for fucking bid, we get some advantages on this. In fact, just to be annoying, I'm gonna trap this archer. <laughs> this is one of my favorite things to do to asshole archers. If you do, like, if you do it where you block their movement so that way they can't physically move at all, they can't do anything. Like, look at this guy. Since he can't move anywhere else, he's not going to be able to attack or move, so I've just basically negated any of his attacks. Which, good. Fuck him. <laughs> I, I, I hate archers sometimes. 
speaking of mergers, uh, I, I, I know I mentioned Rebecca, but she exists. I don't know. <laughs> okay, let's see how this goes. Let's see. Oh no. Look at all that damage he's doing to Marcus. Yeah, so, uh, when I say Marcus is a good mid shield, I'm not joking. He, Marcus can literally just run on the field with no weapons, and he'll do totally fine. You will not have to heal him. Unless you're just, like, throwing pounds of damage against him. Anyway, this is exactly where we want to be now, because now this guy's probably not hitting, and Ellie was at full HP anyway, and now we can finally get a level up on him. Ugh, jeez. Let's move you out of the way, just because... Uh, fuck it, let's have you over here. Um, one thing the game doesn't tell you about Ellywood mode is that with the beginning of this mode, supports have become unlocked. And, um, I'm going to be using the shit out of them. I love supports in this game. Um, so we're going to be looking into that for now. Um, I'm probably going to have to wait a chapter or two before I can really explain it. Probably maybe two chapters if we're being realistic. Um... And yeah, I mean, when we get to that bridge, we'll cross it. For now, all you really need to know is that they're going to break the game in half once I set them up properly. Do I want to attack with Dorcas? Not really. Anyone that could be dying here could be dying to Elliewood's blade, so <laughs> I'd rather Elliewood get a kill. There's no reason to get Dorcas a kill when Dorcas is level 9 and relatively fitting into a position of being an attacker. Okay. It's going to be one of those playthroughs, this isn't it? <laughs> <sighs> I've had Ellie Woods that get nothing but luck, and it is aggravating to say the least. <sighs> I'm not gonna be one of those people though. I'm gonna I'll deal with it. You know, if I get a bad like build with Ellie Wood, I'm gonna eat it. It'll suck, but hey. I don't wanna be annoying. Well, I mean I I, I I'm a little late on that one, but yeah, these guys at least are dying relatively easily. And then... This guy's gonna get aggroed. Oh no! Yeah, at the very least, even with, um... Basic stats, he's still gonna be doing pretty decently for avoiding. If you put him on the right terrain, with weapon triangle advantage. That's gonna be basic tactics that save you every time. And then we'll probably be able to kill this guy? No, actually we won't. Sigh. So, he's probably going to be a total asshole and run away. I bet you. I bet you so much money he will. I bet you fucking anything. Oh, he, he isn't. Wow. <laughs> Awkward. I was wrong. Yet again. Okay, please get speed and strength. Please. Okay, well, at least you got one of them. That's, I can't complain super big right now. I want Ellywood to be doubling because Ellywood's going to be a fairly balanced build in terms of, like, speed versus strength. Um, that said, speed is always going to be more important to me than strength with a character like him just because doubling will make life way easier. Oh, well. So, let's do this. So yeah, the rapier, as you noticed, has slightly better attack and crit rate, um, and it's not, it's not a bad weapon, it's just we want to preserve it for special scenarios. Like, um, similar to the Monikati, it does get a huge power boost against certain types of units, specifically knights and cavaliers, so we want to save it for any bosses like those that can be giving us some trouble, which, rest assured, there may be a few that we'll run into that we, uh, have some issues with. But uh, we'll, we'll wait for that to come up. Either way, I try to avoid using it as much as possible anyway, just because I'm anal retentive like that. <laughs> and I mean, um, the, the usages aren't going to reset. Because like in Lin mode, I abuse the shit out of the Monikati because that resets immediately. Here, it's not going to. So That's uh, something to keep in mind. Alright, let's move on with our lives now. Blah, 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 blah. I say I'm not going to abuse the rapier as I'm using it just to speed up this kill. Also, critical animation. Nice. I'm glad we got to show that off this opening chapter. It's a nice critical animation if I do say so myself. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, what up? 
I'm not going to be abusing the rapier, I say, as I do nothing but use the rapier. <laughs> ah, crap. Oh no, Hollywood, what if you got skill and speed? What if you did that right now? Okay. Well, I, don't know, I, I guess it could be worse. He still hasn't gotten speed, but he's, he's fairly balanced for now. So, eh. All told, you don't need a great build on Hollywood to make the most of his character in terms of, like, in-game usefulness. Um, so, I mean, eh. At the very least, with normal mode, you don't. And in, in hard mode, it might be a bit more... You might have to be a little more uh, unforgiving about his level ups, but... That's neither here nor there. Also, holy moly, we need to speed this up. I didn't realize I was wasting so much time. Alrighty, so let's get our Tukuses over here. Iron sword, blah blah blah. Dorcas who? Come on now. I'm not using the, uh, you know, the joke is dead now. Okay, and... What is this guy's stats? Jesus! Holy shit! Like, Israel and Palestine were deciding on a two-state solution, then they saw this guy's stats. Like, what the fuck? That's embarrassing. Even for this, like... I I'm sorry, I... I I, I just, I can't get over how bad that is. Uh, anyway. I'm gonna play the game of if he gets hit, I'll put him on the fortress. If not, then whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Take a fucking shower. Go back to working in Arby's, dude. I don't care. Uh, of course he would hit. Of course he would hit. Okay, so fortunately he's not gonna be moving because much like a lot of tutorial bosses, although I don't know if he's really a tutorial boss, uh, all things considered, but whatever. Uh, he's stupid and he doesn't move off his space because we have to seize. Um, well, actually, I guess it's not stupid if it's a seize. Can work with me on this one. <laughs> he's dumb, ugly, and I hate him. Okay. So let's try this one more time. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Uh, let's let him hit first. Come on. Come on, come on. Uh, I'm not in love with this. Maybe I'm just spoiled, but usually by this point I have Ellie Wood with like 9, 10 speed, and his strength is usually right around here. So while his strength is nice and all, I want speed. And I want it now. <laughs> oh, golly. Ah, whatever. Magus can't be choosers. Yep. Bye. And we're done. So, could have gone better, but could have gone worse. And here we are, end of the chapter. Yeah, that's Hollywood. Can't you tell by his main character, Aura? <laughs> Can't you tell by that shade of blue he's wearing? When was the last time you saw a side character wearing that blue? Anyway, this is Hollywood being all noble and shit. I'm gonna take a swig of water while you get to read it. Whew. So, uh, if you were actually reading the dialogue, which I hope you were, you'd read. You'd have read. You are reading. You will be reading. Okay, enough tenses. Uh, that Laos was going to prepare itself for war, which is not as... I mean, it's a big deal, but it's also not like the end of the world right now, because Laos is still a relatively smaller nation. It is foreboding, though, because with Laos going to war with little to no provocation, provocation, I can talk today, um, and Elliot's dad going missing, those are two unplanned and unusual events. So, you have to wonder if there's a connection, or worse, if this is leading up to something. But we'll, we'll have to see. I mean, we'll have to find out the hard way by getting in contact with Marcus Laos, potentially even seeing if a neighboring country or power would know where he is. There's a lot of things we gotta do. There's a big to-do list right now. So Laos is definitely ending up on our to-do list. Hmm. I mean, the plot thickens. It's only the first chapter and we've already got a bit of a lead. Anyway, I'll be taking my guidance out of the ring now. See you later. I got Batman Arkham Asylum to play.
No, I, I have a destination. Please. Please. <laughs> no. I... <laughs> It's it's been so long since I've not been involved in a in a political fight. Please, Elliot. Please. Ah, okay. How can I say no to your fucking face? You and your very weird template, whatever that would be called, headband thing. Mm-hmm. So yeah. All all jokes aside, Elliot is a pretty noble guy, and we, we'll get to learn more about him as we go through the story. Here we also get to learn about Rebecca deciding to leave her family behind to help out Hollywood because she's indebted to his life and because little girls need to die for their big lords. Yeah, I mean, it does beg the question. If he didn't invite you, I mean, <laughs> ah, whatever. Donna! I mean, this would actually matter if we were using Rebecca, but we're not. <laughs> Um, so yeah, Rebecca's brother's missing, and she wants to look for him. Will we find her brother? Yeah, we will. I'll even point him out when we run into him. But for now, um, like I said, we're not using Rebecca. So, eh. Kind of a shame. It's a, it's a very, it's kind of a sad plot line when it pays off. I don't know, I mean... Rebecca's kind of a sad character, all in all, because she has a lot of, like... I, okay, I'm, I, I don't want to spoil anything, but, uh... She's, she's, she's got a nice little naivete that doesn't really work out well in this world. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, this, this conversation's going on a bit longer than we wanted it to. Okay, okay, okay. So, there we go. So, that marks the end of Taking Leave, where we'll be taking ourselves to the next chapter on our way to find out what's going on between Elliewood's dad, Elbert, and uh, this connection potentially with Marquis Laos and Laos readying for war. Who knows what could be going on? All I know is I'm ready for some political intrigue, and uh, we're about to get some. So with that in mind, I want to thank you for watching this episode, and I will see you next time when we'll run into the best character in the game without exaggeration. And that's going to be one heck of a fun chapter. So we'll see you then.